Hey everyone, this is Scott from Forgot to Grow Up. Welcome to our Spider-Man Far From Home spoiler review. I just got back from seeing Spider-Man in theaters and I'm going to be sharing my spoiler thoughts. So if you haven't seen the movie yet, you, you don't want to watch this video. I'm spoiling it. Spoiling all the little good bits from it. So this is for the people who have seen it or for people who don't care about being spoiled for it. But yeah, if you want just my general spoiler-free thoughts, I'll be sure to link my other just general movie review there in the description below um, but yeah so spoiler thoughts spoilers for spider-man far from home three two one so yeah i just got back from seeing it i did enjoy it a lot one thing that was a little bit mm, is the fact that the mysterio storyline was exactly what we expected if you know mysterio from the comics which i only know a little bit of because the fact that he was in this movie and i've seen some youtube videos about it to be honest um that being said i did have an idea of the fact that he was a little bit of a trickster he's a little bit of a you know illusionist and so knowing that going in you have an idea of like okay he's, he's seeming like he's a good guy but is he and he's not spoiler again spoiler he he ends up being the bad guy just like a lot of us if like again suspected he's very much like his comic book counterpart from what i know of him which is this guy who puts up puts up illusions in order to kind of trick and that's the way he gets what he wants and in this one it's he's trying to convince everybody that he's the hero that he's that he's the new iron man and i really i thought they did a really great job of making me at, the, at no point throughout the movie was i 100 percent sure whether he was or wasn't until we got to the point where they're starting where spider-man's trying to unravel it himself so i thought that was pretty good because i did go into this being like okay all right and i was waiting i was waiting the whole time for a little hints at mysterio to like give a little clue and a little something something here and there and they did a good a pretty job of keeping it really neat but also keeping it like vague enough that you're like yeah no i can see it i, I believe it he does but it's also it wasn't it wasn't disappointing at the same time even though i know knew what was coming i thought they still did a great job the fact that he is a former stark employee was one thing i didn't even think of doing and that they connect it to uh, Stark technology that we've seen in previous films. I just uh, I just really love that connection So I thought that was really brilliant and really just great like just well done Just such a Marvel thing to do a little really very MCU thing to do Which I thought was just really great really great connection between them and the fact that he's being helped out by other former Stark employees who all felt a little bit um, unappreciated by uh, Tony uh, when he was alive. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Um, so yeah, I really enjoyed that that you know, the twist of Mysterio being a former Stark employee and that he's working with or is assisted by other former Stark employees and the idea is that they want to be in charge because they never were listened to like the whole hologram thing but yeah I really really still enjoyed it even though I thought it was I saw it coming I saw I knew Mysterio was going to be the bad guy in the end I was pretty uh, cert, per, not I won't say certain of that but I thought that was gonna happen and it did but I, like I said I thought they did a good job of bringing that out um <laughs> I did think it was funny though that this was another one of those um Peter Parker or Spider-Man mentors who end up being a bad guy so he gets a little bit of mentorship and then it's a bad guy that's the same with Doc Ock in the first Spider-Man trilogy and then the the, um, the lizard in the second Spider-Man trilogy so it's kind of funny to see that kind of coming up again but it was also a lot more fitting in this case with him having just lost Tony and him needing to kind of him feeling a lot of pressure from everybody to be the new Iron Man like he's even at one point asked by a bunch of people if he's kind of the new Iron Man if he's the new head Avenger and it's which I think is just really presumptuous of a lot of these people asking him because it's like well why is spider-man he's the, he doesn't even have seniority really he's one of the newest ones so why would why is everyone assuming it's him and i mean if anyone hears his voice you know he's he's still a teenager because he gets squeaky at some points but i still really like the fact that it was another i thought they did a good job with this being a kind of a would-be mentor who ends up being a bad guy um so yeah i thought that was great so now there's not really much else about the movie uh, to really talk too much about. Uh, just to spoil, really. I really enjoyed all the action scenes. I thought that they were all great. I thought they did a great job of using Spider-Man's abilities. When, when, I, when he's fighting up against the the drones that are controlled by Mysterio, those, uh, like... <laughs> All the, like the different things they have Spider-Man do to like be aware of all of them and his Spidey sense that he gets finally at the end of this movie. I just really, really enjoyed. But the spoiler thing I need to really talk about are those post-credits. Those two post-credit scenes we got, particularly that first one. That first one is a big one. It's a, 
is a big spoiler and a big, big thing. This it changed a lot of the movie, and it adds a little bit of a different ending to the movie too. And that's first of all, first of all, first of all though, we get a little. This, this postcard is great because it gives us the treat that I didn't think we'd ever get. But but Marvel and the MCU slash Sony decided, yeah, we're gonna do it. We're gonna give it to you. And they gave us a little J. Jonah Jameson, but not just any J. Jonah Jameson. The J. Jonah Jameson is the J.K. Simmons J. K. Jonah Jameson. And I was like, ah, it's the day of the bugle that that is. They brought it into the MCU. Ah. Ah. <laughs> that was probably my favorite part of the whole movie. Maybe not, but it was a great way to end the movie, giving us this little treat that really doesn't matter but it's great that they they go to the little effort of giving us that because they could have had any newscaster but they gave us the one they wanted the one that us people who saw the first spider-man trilogy in theaters wanted to see and i loved it i thought it was great but then there's the news he delivers as well which was the mysterio had a little last thing before he i guess died because i think he got shot by his own drones um but yeah before he died he he frames Spidey, and that's another part of that's what J. Jonah Jameson's dropping on us in this post credit is the fact that Spidey's now A gets his name released, so everybody knows Peter Parker's Spidey, even though it's and then then he's been framed for Mysterio's murder, which is an incidental death, but it's still anyways, um, but that's just going into this movie I did not expect to end with Spidey being framed for some shit and this just makes me like not even know where we're going in the MCU from now because I, I don't even have an idea which is great it's exciting for me to know that we're in this like mystery zone and that they leave us with this like very little little thing at the end of the movie in the post credits to be like oh yeah but by the by the way he, he didn't get off completely scot-free Spidey's got some shit, and he's got to deal with that. And it's like, oh, when are we in the next Spidey? Is it two years away? I wait two years to find out when Spidey's. I want to know what happens. So I thought that was a really well chosen post credit scene. Then we go on to the second one, which I just thought was fun and does kind of answer some questions about this. So the second post credit scene, we see Maria Hill and uh, Nick Fury driving along, and it turns out it's not Nick Fury and Maria Hill, it's the scrolls. The two scrolls that we had gotten, the husband and wife who were in Captain Marvel, apparently they decided to come back to Earth to help out Sam Jackson for a couple, or Nick Fury for a couple weeks, and they got themselves into some shenanigans. But I really like that because it kind of explains how Nick Fury fell <laughs> for. <laughs> <laughs> mysterious stuff and that's because it wasn't the real Nick Fury so that's a little fun way to kind of get Nick Fury off a little bit scot-free being like oh yeah no I I wasn't actually there my bad um, but I just that was just a fun thing it was also fun kind of bringing those two characters back obviously it was probably filmed around the same time I imagine as Captain Marvel so that was just a fun little tie-in and just like I said it just adds a little bit more like just makes you a little bit more confident in Nick Fury, I guess. Like, the fact that he had fallen for Mysterio, before you see that post credit scene, you know, you don't really know. But, so, like, leading up to that, I just kind of pegged it off as, well, he's just desperate. Like, he's he even says at one point, I've been gone five years, I got nobody. So, I, like, I kind of played it off as, like, oh, he just... He was just really happy and he, too good to be true kind of thing, but the fact that it ends up being not him <laughs> so is just a fun little little change up and it just makes it a little bit more kind of suiting that, you know, Mysterio got one over on Nick Fury and it's because it wasn't the real Nick Fury. So that was a fun little addition. But yeah, that's pretty much all my thoughts on the spoilers for Spider-Man Far From Home. I really enjoyed it and I'm really excited to see more Spider-Man in the MCU, more Tom Holland Spider-Man in the MCU. I'm super curious to see where we go from here. I want to see more J.K. Simmons in the MCU and then Spider-Man in the MCU. I, I'm excited for more of it and I'm curious because I don't even know when the next MCU movie comes out. So I got to go look that up for another video. But yeah, that's all my spoiler thoughts or all my thoughts on the spoilers from Spider-Man Far From Home. Sure to let me know in the comments below what you thought of the movie. Did you like it or not? What was your favorite part or something you didn't particularly like about it? But thanks again for joining me today. Sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and have a good one.